Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. So I want to come on here and talk about some more stuff concerning Nipsey. So like I posted on Instagram yesterday, um, the Nipsey Hustle page, they posted that his funeral is going to be this Thursday at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. So right now they are giving away free tickets. It starts this morning at 10 o'clock. Um, you can apply to get your tickets. Only four tickets will be allowed per household. The service is going to be from 10 a.m. to noon. And they're also going to drive his body around several locations throughout South Los Angeles because they know there's not going to be enough room at the Staples Center for anybody who wants to pay, you know, their respects to Nipsey. So they will also be driving his body around. So they posted the flyer yesterday. Um, a lot of people... You know, just brought back a lot of memories and it's just basically solidified to everybody that, you know, we lost somebody who was a great aspect in the community, who did a lot for his community. So they are definitely doing it big for Nipsey Hustle as they should. Um, this is definitely a celebration of his life. A lot of people over the past week, I can't even believe it's been a whole week since he was killed. Um, they've come out and they showed up and showed out. Everybody from the Nation of Islam to just regular everyday people to the gangs coming together to the you know i'm um, eritrean community coming together to show him love and support it's just been amazing watching all of this play out um so on top of the whole nipsey hustle thing as we all found out christopher darden he agreed to represent eric holder who was the murderer of nipsey hustle he he murdered that man in cold blood and we all know christopher darden for um being oj simpson's former prosecutor and so when people heard this, people were really upset. Like, out of all people, why would you take on this case? You try to prosecute O.J. Simpson, and now you're defending the guy who blatantly, you know, killed Nipsey Hussle in broad daylight in cold blood. And what was even more disturbing, there's been so many stories now that's come out since he died. And um, his business partner was saying that they had a conversation with him. Dude shook their hand. You know, he left, came back, um, and then he shot Nipsey. And we just purchased their building. Just bought the whole building. So it's been 16 years in the making. Me and Nipsey was talking, and uh, the dude that shot him, he came and shook our hands. Said he was a rapper and all this old bullshit. Uh, shook our hands. The dude went and got his burger. He left. When he left, I went and took my food in. As soon as I took my food inside the building, uh, the dude came back around the building busting. So I might have left Nipsey's side maybe three seconds. I left him maybe approximately about three seconds that I had left Nipsey, and, and, and the dude came and shot him. We know who he is. It's no, it's no mystery. Uh, it's no mystery. We know who he is. Like I said, it was uh, it's all hate and envy. That's all it was. It was jealousy, hate, and envy. Uh, Nipsey didn't deserve to die like that. Uh, 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 what seems to be a less talented rapper, uh, you know, uh, had envy and hate in his eyes. That's what it was all about. It was, it was nothing else. It was no motive. It was no beef. It was nothing. It was nothing but envy, hate. Then it came out that after he shot Nipsey, Nipsey was still alive. He told the guy, he was like, you know, I can't believe you shot me, but I'm good. And so when Eric Holder heard Nipsey still talking, he turned around, went back, and shot him two more times. And that fatal shot was the shot to the head. So this man knew what he was doing. Even after he shot him the, fir the first time, when Nipsey didn't die, he turned around and finished the job. So there's really, there, there's no defending that. You know what I'm saying? There's no defending that. But what I understand, we live in America, and everybody deserves a fair trial, I guess. It just doesn't make sense why he would take on this case. I don't know if he's doing it for attention, if he's doing it, you know, to get more notoriety. He's a wealthy lawyer. You know, he's definitely made his money over the years. He's, you know, his name is solidified. He still works a lot of cases. I just find this really interesting that he's taking on this case. So anyways, his daughter, Tiffany Darden, um, she goes by Coco Fly Online. Um, she has been receiving so much hate and vitriol. It's crazy. And I remember when the news first came out, I ended up going to her Instagram page to check out what she had to say about the situation. And this woman was literally learning about what her father did as we were all learning it. I was on her page literally within about 20 to 30 minutes after the news came out and she was like in shock because people were like, did you hear? What do you think about this? She's like, what do, what do I think about what? They're like, what do you think about what your father has done? And she was like, well, what did he do? And when people were like, he's going to be defending Eric Holder, like she was shocked. She literally learned 
in her comment section of her father taking on this case. I watched it myself, you know, the conversation play out. And she was like, you know, I'm lost for words. So once a lot more people found out who she was, people started attacking her and sending her just all this hate. So she has finally decided to address the situation. I'm gonna go ahead and read that to you here. So this is what she had to say. She says, I've been receiving vile comments and messages since news broke that my father, Chris Darden, is the defense attorney for the man accused of killing Nipsey Hussle. Like many of you, I found out about my father's involvement in the case while scrolling through social media. I was not prepared for this backlash that has triggered bad memories from the O.J. Simpson trial. My father is a grown man and has been a defense attorney for some time. I have no say in the cases he takes on. L.A. is like a second home to me. I grew up in a community similar to Nipsey's and was saddened by the news of his death. So I understand why it hurts deeply when we lose young, talented black men like him who are committed to empowering people. Instead of attacking me and others who have nothing to do with this case, channel that energy towards continuing Nipsey's legacy and strengthening our communities and lifting up each other. Thank you to those who have been supportive of me. I don't know how this will play out, but I will continue to pray for Nipsey Hussle's family. May they have peace and justice, Janae Darden. So I think she goes by two different names, but that is what she wrote on her social media page. And I agree with her 100%. Her father is definitely, you know, getting the side eye from me for taking on this case, but you cannot blame her. We can't do a whole sins of the father situation because his daughter has been so unproblematic. It doesn't make sense why people are going out their way to attack her. Whatever her father decides to do, like she said, he's a grown man. So if he wants to take on the case, hold him accountable. Don't take that out on her and the rest of their family. They don't have anything to do with that. She does not control what her grown father chooses to do. You know, I'm pretty sure that her dad is aware that this guy is trash. He knew there was going to be backlash coming. But again, we live in a day and age where everybody wants social media attention, regardless if it's good or bad. So if I can take on this case and have my name trending again and popping, it is what it is. But again, you know, like she said, it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. Um, you know, with what he did, there's no way that he cannot be found guilty. I think the only thing Darden can do for him is try and get him off of getting the death penalty because he's going to be found guilty either way. You know, there's surveillance video, there's all types of witnesses, and then the fact that he went back to shoot him to make sure the job was finished, you know, it, it leaves a lot to the imagination. I definitely understand where people are coming from with the conspiracies, the government's conspiracies, and saying he was a plant. But, you know, at the end of the day, we don't know. You know, we don't know 100% who planted them there. Was this plan? Was this a setup? You know, Black Sam, Nipsey Hussle's brother, is feeling like it's a setup. But, you know, until there's more proof or evidence, who knows? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Chris Darden's daughter finally speaking out about the hate and the backlash that she's getting. And then will you be attending Nipsey Hussle's funeral this Thursday at the Staples Center? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. All praise due to a lot. We are here to dedicate this time and moment to our great prince, a general. Let us stop all gang wars. Let us stop all black on black crime, brown on brown crime. This is the first time in the history of Los Angeles that we have stood up when a black man kill another black man. We are saying that crap is done. We will try to unite all the tribes so that we can finish out his legacy. We believe in freedom. We believe in equality of opportunity. 
We believe in justice. We want that justice apply equally to all, regardless to creed, class, or color. Long live the spirit of Brother Nipsey Hussle. Hermes Ascaron was a man who proudly chose to give back to his community in both Asmara and Los Angeles. He also had no fear to represent where he was from and always had pride of being an Eritrean American. He proved to us that even as children of African immigrants, where it feels like we're never too American enough for America or African enough for Africa, we can create our own land, give back and create a community regardless of our identity. So when he continuously let people know where he came from, the youth had stopped feeling invisible and they started to feel recognized and closer to the community. Nipsey was much more than just a rapper. He was our neighborhood hero. He always talked about ways he could stop gang violence and help us kids have a safer environment and better education. We can continue his legacy by always spreading peace and positivity because violence isn't the answer. Not only did Nipsey talk about his marathon, but he encouraged everyone else to also embark on their marathon. This is why his words replay in our heads over and over. We need to make his legacy last forever. The marathon has to continue. One thing I noticed about myself, I think, you know, thoughts is powerful in yeah. all facets. Because even my career, even my life, you know, things end up turning out exactly how I visualized them. Not in this time frame I expected. You always want shit to happen overnight. But I just had clear visions. And uh, your thoughts are powerful. That shit come to life if you stick to your script.